Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and this is a re-upload of my Nest battery doorbell review that I did a few months ago. I took that video down shortly after I published it because I got some details wrong about the subscription fee. And originally I thought this was a pretty useful doorbell without a subscription, but as it turns out, it's not useful at all if you don't keep paying that ongoing fee to Nest and Google. And where I got tripped up was in regards to video storage. They said on their website that they'll store three hours of video if you're not a subscriber. And I thought that meant three cumulative hours of video clips from the doorbell, when in fact three hours means that after three hours they delete every clip that it records. And so if somebody was marching around your property at 2 a.m. and then you woke up at 6, the video would have been deleted an hour before you woke up. And I think that is really turning this really somewhat useful product into a doorstop, if you will unless you're willing to pay that fee. But there are some endearing features on this, especially for Nest subscribers. So I have reworked the original video with more accurate information, and we're gonna start that right now. Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I needed a new doorbell the other day, so I bought the new Nest battery doorbell. This, as its name implies, runs off a battery and does not require any wiring to operate, although it does work with battery wiring if you have it. And we're going to take a closer look at this product and what it's all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this new doorbell is all about. Now the price point on this is $179. That puts its price slightly ahead of the entry-level ring doorbell. As I mentioned, it has a battery on board. Google says this will operate for about two to three months before you have to bring it in and charge it. If you wire it up to your doorbell's existing wiring, you don't need to charge it at all. And the charge time, unfortunately, is rather long. They say it takes about five hours to get to a full charge once the battery is depleted. As such, this is more of a notification camera than a security camera, which means that it's only going to record something when it detects something. It won't do an ongoing recording of video, even if it's plugged into the wiring from your existing doorbell and even if you're paying the subscription fee. So it's only going to give you video when somebody or something comes to the door or you have a motion event uh, configured to set the recording to go, but by and large it will uh, be off most of the time to preserve its battery. Now if you have a door with a lot of foot traffic, you might see less battery life. Google is basing their battery life assumptions on about 16 activations a day. So if you have more than that, you're going to see less battery life. If you have less than 16 activations a day, you'll see better battery life. And of course, if you have it wired into your doorbell system, you don't have to worry about battery life at all. But if you are intending to use this on the battery, just know your mileage will vary. Now, the build quality on this is really nice. It is super solid. It comes in four different colors, and you have to buy the color you want. There's no removable face plates on this. It is waterproof, so you can put it someplace where it'll get rained on. You shouldn't have any problems with water invasion on it. Uh, you do have a big button here to ring the doorbell. And to let people know that this is a button, it will illuminate this ring around the button when somebody walks up to the door, and that will invite them to push it to let you know that they are there. Now, here's a problem with this. There doesn't appear to be, at the moment, any kind of plug-in chime device like you might see from Ring. So if you don't have a Nest Home speaker or one of those mm -hmm. Nest Homes with the screen, Someone's the, the only way you're going to know somebody's at your door is if your phone goes off because you're not going to be able to hear the chime on this device because it's outside. So if you don't have one of those Nest Home devices, you might have a hard time hearing <laughs> that somebody's at the door. Now, if you are using your existing doorbell wiring and you have a chime wired into that doorbell now, this will work with it. But if you're intending to use the battery, be prepared to put in one of those Nest speakers into your shopping cart so you can hear when somebody gets to the door. Now it's very easy to install. There's a bracket that you screw into your house and then you just snap this thing down on top of it. There is a key that they give you to get it out of the bracket when you need to charge it. And that key gets inserted into a slot here at the top and then you just kind of pull it off the bracket. 
Then you come inside and plug in its USB-C cable to charge it up. And then when you put it back on the bracket, it reactivates and you're back up and running. And the manual says that if you happen to lose the key, you can use a Phillips head screwdriver to pop it out of the bracket. It does, of course, require Wi-Fi to operate. It works with 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and it also connected to my 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi here. So find the strongest Wi-Fi signal and connect to that. It does actually work when the internet goes down. It'll record about an hour of footage when it doesn't have a Wi-Fi signal. So it will capture things that are going on even if the power goes out. Now, one thing to note is that at the time I'm recording this video, the only thing it works with is the Google Home app on Android and iOS. I could not get it to work with my Amazon system. It also doesn't work with HomeKit. But that's at the moment I'm shooting this video. That could change in the near future. Now, to control the doorbell, we're going to jump into the doorbell icon here on my front door. And as you can see, I've got other devices that I can control through the Home app. We're going to click on the front door. And you can see here my battery is at 98%. If I click on Live Video, what I will get is a live feed from the doorbell sitting on my front door there. I'll give you a closer look at it here. And as you can see, it shoots its video vertically. The resolution is 960 by 1280. It shoots at 30 frames per second and has a three to four aspect ratio with a 145 degree field of view. Now, because it is vertically oriented, you can see that it's showing more of my house on the left-hand side than I might like. So what they included in the box is this angled bracket that you can use to nudge the camera's position over a little bit so you could see more of the walkway, for example, and that might be something that I install a little bit later. Now, the camera can record day and night. You're looking at a daytime shot that was taken a little bit earlier. It is a bit rainy today, but you can see what it can pick up in typical daylight conditions. This shot was taken in the evening with my porch lights on. It looks very nicely exposed. And then it also has a night vision mode and it will pick up things in total darkness because it has an infrared illuminator that Google says will go about 10 feet. So no matter what the lighting conditions are, you will be able to get a useful image out of the camera. Now the doorbell has a microphone and a speaker on board. And if you're curious as to what the microphone sounds like on the doorbell, here you go. This is a test of the audio. I have found sometimes the lip sync is a little out of whack on the app, although when I download the video, it looks okay. But sounds pretty good, I think, and you can definitely hear people when you're communicating with them. Now, in order to have a conversation with somebody at your door, you do need to push down the microphone button either on the app or on your Google Home device. I was very pleased with the quality of the audio out of the speaker that's built into the doorbell. It is very loud and clear, so I think anyone who's at the door should be able to make out what you're trying to say to them. And if you prefer not to talk to the person when they're at the door, let me go back into the camera here, uh, you can actually just have the Google Assistant read off a pre-prepared message. So if I click on more here and go to quick responses, I can have it say, you can just leave it. Hi there, you can just leave it, thanks. Now, as I mentioned, the doorbell will only record things that happen in front of it. So to review what has happened in front of my doorbell, let me click on it here again and go over to history. And what it will do is pick up the last event that took place, which was me putting the camera back up on its mount. If I click on full history here, it will give me every event that it's recorded over the last couple of days. And this is where that subscription fee comes into play because unless you are subscribed to the Nest Aware service, your doorbell is only going to keep videos for three hours before they are deleted on the server. You gotta get to them quick, even in the middle of the night, if you want to preserve anything. With the subscription, you can start with 30 days on the regular Nest Aware plan or get up to 60 days on Nest Aware Plus. Now I'm finding that the camera typically records only about 30 seconds of video at a time. Basically once the person that triggered it walks off the camera frame, it turns off the recording. The one thing that the subscription gets you that is not on the free tier is that the camera can do facial recognition, or I'm guessing the Google Cloud does that for you. So when somebody walks up to the doorbell, it will recognize their face. And as you can see here, 
it saw that I came to the door a little bit earlier and it automatically labeled the clip as my name. And earlier, I also tested it out with the doorbell on my Google Home. So when I went up to the door and pushed the button, the Google Home Long announced, in addition to the doorbell. chime, that I was the one at the door. Now, you do have to go through and manually tag everybody who comes to your door, and you'll be presented with a list of unknown faces so you can uh, train the system to know who these people are when they get there. And again, on the free tier, you don't get the face recognition, but you do get actually a lot of AI features for free. One of them is a person detector. So although on the free tier, you don't know who the person is, the camera will tell you that a person came into the frame. So that's good. Another thing that it can do on the free tier is detect packages. So if I click on package here and click show results, I'm going to go to this one from 2.21 p.m. earlier today. I was playing a UPS guy and walked up to the bench there and put a package on it. You can see me walking in there now. There's the box. I walked away. And as you can see, the camera picked up a package. Now, it does have my name here because I did opt for the 30-day free trial of the subscription plan. After that free trial ends, it'll change my name to person. But again, it will detect people that walk into the frame. I just won't know who they are, and it will also detect packages. It can also detect animals on the free tier, and where I live, that's kind of important because I've got bears, deer, fisher cats, dogs, you name it, walking through the yard all the time. So I did a little test earlier with my dog. I just walked in front of the camera with the dog, and it detected me and uh, the dog as we were walking by. You can see lawn and animal here in what it picked up. All right, let's jump into the camera settings now and see what we can configure. I'm going to start off here in events because this is where you can more finely tune what the camera detects and how it notifies you. Uh, so right now, I, I'm not using this feature, but there is a feature called activity zones. And this will allow you to set up a specific portion of the image to be detecting motion in. And so if you have a portion of your image where nobody should ever be, uh, you can block off a square so that anytime something enters that region, you can get notified. I have that turned off right now. I'm kind of relying on the AI uh, for my detections here. Uh, because we are on the free tier right now, I've got that familiar face detection enabled. And you saw earlier how we were able to link up different faces. Now I have it now notifying me anytime a person comes into the frame. And what that means is that anytime someone walks in front of the doorbell, even if they don't push the button, I get a notification pushed to my phone. It does not though set off my Nest Home device until somebody pushes the ring button on the doorbell itself. So just be aware of that, but you will get notified on your phone when somebody walks in front. It'll also detect the packages that we talked about earlier, and I also have animal detection on, but I do not have it notifying me about animals because animals walk across my yard all the time in the middle of the night. I don't want to know about it, but I do want it to record those events because sometimes it's cool to see what kind of animals might be walking around my yard. I can also enable vehicle detection. I should never see a vehicle in my front yard, but that might be something you might want to enable, uh, so you can do that. And then you also can enable just raw motion detection, but they recommend that you leave this off because things like a tree blowing in the wind or a bug landing on the camera might set it off and start recording. And not only does that give you false alarms that you have to go through, it also reduces the battery life. So all of these trade-offs are on these notification cameras to try to give you as much battery life as possible before you have to haul it in and charge it for five hours. Now, if you're unhappy with the video quality, you can boost it to the max setting. I don't think that's necessary. You saw the footage that it was generating with its default setting, which it calls high. That looked just fine to me, but you can adjust that if you want. If you have trouble with the night vision reflecting off of things, you can turn it off here or leave it on all the time. The default here is auto. You can also adjust its status light. Uh, if it's too bright on the door, you can set it to low so it doesn't disturb people. Uh, one last thing to look at, and that is the audio settings here. Uh, you can decide to not use the mic or use the mic only when you're talking to somebody at the door and not record at other times. You can also adjust the volume of the speaker that you're using to talk with people. Now, overall, I am pleased with this doorbell, and that's because I already have a Nest Home device. 
if I didn't have that device, I wouldn't be as happy because the compatibility here is rather limited. So you can't hear the doorbell inside of your house when somebody pushes the button unless you've got a Nest speaker or a Nest display. And it doesn't work at the moment with the Amazon ecosystem, nor does it work with Apple HomeKit. And it doesn't even work with Android TV, which is a Google platform. So I'm hoping they expand out the compatibility here a bit because right now it's very much limited to those Nest devices and not much else. But because I have that, I'm in good shape. So if you've got a Google Nest device, I see this as a very good purchase and a nice complement to what you may already have. But if you don't and are trying to use this with other smart home devices or you just want to hear your doorbell ring, this may not do it for you unless you make an additional purchase to be able to hear that doorbell sound. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Hot Sauce and Video Games, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Thomas Anfang, Jim Tannis, and Handheld Obsession. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.